welcome to Small Spark Theory. This podcast is designed as a collection of thoughts, ideas, and practical tips on using marginal gains to help your agency new business endeavors. Small Spark Theory is hosted and created by Lucy Mann, founder of Gunpowder Consulting. Welcome back to Small Spark Theory. Now, for the last couple of episodes, we've been challenging you to think about some of the bigger, knottier issues of agency growth. So certainly with David C. Baker in episode 13, we were talking about the power of agency positioning. And in episode 14, when we chatted to Erica Wolf murray we were looking at how you can actually rethink your intellectual assets and find new ways to sell new things to new clients. We've got a a slight change of tack this time. We're going to be exploring the more tactical end of the sales and marketing effort. We're going to talk about social media. Now, I talk to lots of agencies who get a bit confused about what to do with their social media, partly because they haven't got a lot of time to think about it, but also when there, there isn't a lot of time and resource trying to understand how it can actually impact new business they feel they're not quite sure what they're doing and how they should be going about it. So I'm delighted to have Claire and Alex Blythe from new business agency Red Setter here to help. If you haven't come across them before, Red Setter provide both traditional opportunity generation um, as well as PR and thought leadership specifically for agencies. So they see every day how great marketing content can impact on new business performance. Welcome, Alex and Claire. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having us. Great to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself and setting up Red Setter. I set Red Setter up nine years ago now, and it was basically because I wanted to help the best design agencies get noticed and chosen. And my background is all new business development, and basically new business development is a tough job to do in-house. I've done it, and it's easy to get siloed as a person sort of on your own. In Red Setter, we work as a team, and we have... We develop our clients' propositions and new business strategy and content and social media and build databases, getting out the content basically to the right people in the right media or directly to the right people that the companies want to work with. It's something that nobody else was doing at the time and certainly no one else is doing now within branding and design mm. to the extent that we do. There isn't anybody that I've come across that's got that blend of the journalistic approach that you take, Alex, mm as well as the sales approach? Because thought leadership is so embedded into good new business practice now, isn't it? Absolutely. I think it has to be, really. I think the days when agencies could approach brands with, here's our credentials, here are some case studies that you might be interested in, email over a deck, they're long gone. You've got to be able to find something that genuinely does interest that brand, that shows the quality of thinking at your agency, that you're not just an agency that can produce nice looking design you yeah. need to be able to do that as well yeah but to have the strategy behind it to actually stand out and, and to offer something that nobody else is and it's obviously it's much easier now to be able to have that voice than it ever has been before because there are this proliferation of channels that allows even a small agency if yeah. they're well organized to have a a big voice out yeah, there. Yeah, which is great. It's a massive opportunity for the agencies, yeah. but it's a problem because you have to do it now. Yes. <laughs> In yes, many yes, ways, okay. 20 years ago, it was simply you could just find a list of companies and call through them. Yes. And then maybe work at one of them or more of them. Yeah, yeah I've done now, that successfully in the past. It, it, yeah, yeah, that has worked, but it doesn't anymore because everybody else is doing this. The channels and the opportunity is there. Yeah. You have to be doing it. Okay. So you published at the end of last year this fantastic report on how agencies are using social media for growth. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. Now, you researched the Design Week and the campaign Top 100 Agencies, so that's 200 together. That's right, right, as well as some of these network agencies. Right. So we got those in that that don't appear in the league table. Okay, so Mm. you you monitored their social media channels and uh, analysed their channels? Over a month last summer, we took a look at each one of their channels, taking mm-hmm. the main ones there, and what they were doing, uh, getting the numbers there in terms yeah. of followers, in terms of how active they were their levels of engagement. Yeah, okay. And you interviewed agency founders as well, so about 50 mm-hmm. agency That's founders. right, yeah. Great, okay. 
What were the surprises? I mean, I've had I've had a read through. Uh, what were the surprises in the report for you? I think one of the surprises was that the biggest reason that people don't invest in social media and do it properly is time. And I think it's kind of a surprise. It's 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 not really time. It's more they're not quite sure. They haven't got the content and they're not quite sure how to do it. So putting a chunk of time in the diary saying develop social media strategy seems a little unstructured. Yeah. So it seems like it's because of the time, but really it's because you haven't really got clear the messages and what you want to say to people and then the content to actually push out and say yeah. it. Yeah, in some ways it just wasn't a surprise. Uh, agency owners, founders don't have time to do anything. Yeah. Everyone knows that. Yeah, of course. But yeah. it was breaking it down into that. What do we actually mean by that? And it's the two thoughts of one, we don't know what to say there. Yeah. What, what's our agency got to say on Twitter? And two, it's the sort of actual mechanics of what do I hashtag, what are the legalities mm. around image use and, yes. and all those sort yes. of nitty-gritty issues. Yeah. And it was a surprise, I think, to us that it wasn't anything bigger than that. Yeah. That mm. these are, that's essentially two of the things that our agency does. We have a whole team of journalists and PR people that help our clients create really yeah. compelling content that can be chopped up and used on social media in lots of different ways. And we run workshops for all our clients, giving them those practicalities. You know, do these five things every day and you grow your social media influence and yeah. impact. And so it's, the solution is there. But yes. I think as Claire's saying, it's just that having that headspace to just think, how do I sort out social mm. media? What's the process to go through? It's interesting, isn't it? Because I find, I'm, certainly when I'm talking to agencies, you know, I come across this, there's a feeling of, oh, is being on Twitter actually going to help us win new business? And, mm. Mm. and the short answer is no. It might happen, but it's unlikely that there's going to be a new business lead that's going to be directly attributable mm. to a particular tweet or by your uh, Twitter presence. However, it's part of that broader profile raising, mm. content sharing, I think awareness, it is. thought leadership. And I think what tends to happen perhaps is when you talk about the lack of time thing, actually when time is squeezed or when the pipeline is under pressure, it's easier just to think about the things that are more tangible how can I make mm. some mm. impact quickly? And the relationship between social media and the pipeline feels a bit nebulous. Yeah. So, so therefore, it's something we can think about next week, I, next I th- month. I think that's <laughs> changing, though. Yeah. I, I was with a client yesterday that told a story of a piece of coverage that we got into the media. They then did a really good job of amplifying that through social. Yeah. Has resulted in a client in the States picking up the phone to them and giving them a brief. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think more and more that is where brands are getting their recommendations. It's nice when they remember they saw it on social media and, and the actual piece of coverage it came on because often it isn't. It's often sort of word of mouth. They heard that, heard about that agency somewhere. Yeah, it, it really and does. certainly LinkedIn. I mean, I, I know mm. I say to my clients, even if you listen to nothing else I've told you, get LinkedIn sorted out. Absolutely. <laughs> and I've seen in the last couple of months how an agency that hasn't been doing an awful lot in marketing terms, just by posting some recent projects on LinkedIn, having not done very much at all, suddenly got lots of inquiries and mm. added new business into the numbers early in the year. So it can be really powerful. Mm. But like everything, it just requires a bit of a plan, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. What do you think is the starting point? I would say the starting point has to be the messages that you would like people to believe about you and to see, and it has to feel very much like you and your agency, but working out what you want to say and what people will be interested in, why they should be interested in the first place. When we're helping our clients work out their messages and what they should be taking to the media or or social media, we look at three areas. Firstly, it's who are they? What are their strengths? What's the work that they enjoy doing? What's the strongest case studies they want to replicate? And then their competitors, how are they different to people they're going to come up against? Where is the white space for them? And then it's that audience. So what are the issues that matter to the people that they want to work for, yeah, yeah. the sort of things that keep the brand managers up at night. Yes. Uh, what, what are those things? And the strongest messages are the ones that sit at the centre of all three of those. There was an interesting point in the report where you talked about, and obviously if we're talking about um, social media being part of that profile-raising effort, you mentioned about journalists finding it really hard 
obviously they need to find content and agency websites often are fairly impenetrable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but you got a lovely example of a journalist there saying that they will turn to social media to look for particular case studies to write about. And in fact, I was rereading the report last night in preparation for today and it reminded me to go back in and have a little look at the journal request hashtag, which I kind of do every now and again, but I hadn't mm. done for a number of months. And I had a look at it yesterday and I was and just by putting into the search box in Twitter hashtag journal request and design and I was amazed by the number of requests for case studies another public design publication saying they were looking for new contributors so that's a real opportunity there and I think for agencies that can't necessarily afford uh, mm. PR support or social media support just some simple hacks like that surely are, um, yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, are yeah. going to be because if you can build a relationship with a journalist through Twitter then that's going to see you in good stead yeah, or every journalist is on Twitter all of the time yeah. that's where yeah. they're, they're looking for news and there are, absolutely there are many opportunities for agencies to get into the media with their stories and their ideas and their name. And it's not just in the design media as well. A, a lot of our focus is on the, the vertical trade, the business, the, yeah. the nationals, the sort of publications that we think the brand teams are more likely to be reading. Yeah. They do yeah. read the design media, that's an yeah. influence on them. But it's those sort of verticals and, and business media. Mm. Great, great. I mean, the thing I love about this whole topic is that there are huge opportunities for marginal gains. Just by making small efforts and doing small things, you can actually make a bit of a change. What would your top three tips be for making marginal gains in social media? I would say the first one would be to look at your case studies and get them spot on from the point of view of what do people want to buy. Yeah, I think it's really important to have case studies that don't just focus on... Some case studies can be quite nebulous of look at what we did rather yeah. than why people... But produce a business case of why people should be buying into you in the first place. Yeah. Do you find in design in particular it's there tends to be a lot of focus on the detail of the design absolutely rather than the business challenge yeah uh, and solving the business problem it gets mm. into the kerning or the <laughs> yeah completely <laughs> the, uh, the foil the look and the <laughs> foil blocking yeah. It's, yeah it's the creative solution that they're excited about showing yeah. yes yes understandably yes and that needs to be there but it needs to be in the context of the business challenge yeah and the commercial outcomes. Yeah, I think within case studies, people can often get hung up on the fact that they haven't got actual results because it's really hard to get results from clients and yeah. often they don't have percentage increases and stuff like that that can just be directly attributable to the design. Yeah. But they will have a business challenge and they will have done stuff to overcome that challenge. Yes. And it's that what really interests people of yeah. how, they, how they achieve that. Okay. Any other tips? Think of the audience. That's the thing. I, uh, I, I, yeah. Yes. I, that's... Mm. I think my mantra through a lot of my work that it always begins not with what you want to say. What they what want to hear. People, well, not people want to hear, but which aspects or which issues you can help most with. Most right. with. So a lot of my role is helping our clients come up with the strongest idea for articles, which the team of journalists at Red Setter then produce for our clients. And I always try and get them to think of this sort of tightrope that you need to walk with all of this content that if you make it too much about yourself it falls down one side you're just talking about who you are and that's not of interest to anyone mm -hmm. but if you're being too esoteric and just talking about broad industry trends and themes where you perhaps haven't got the authority to speak or you're not demonstrating that authority there is no connection to who you are it becomes yeah. manufactured rather than real yeah our focus is very much on finding out what is unique and different and interesting and special about the clients we work for and then helping them express that in the best way. It's that finding that conversation that you can own, isn't it? It is. Okay. Mm. It's a good okay. way of putting it. Yeah. I have a question about advice that you've been given. I've asked all of our guests what piece of advice they've been given that's really stuck with you over the years. I think you can answer that question. Yeah, I think it is that issue with the audience. I think in one of my first jobs, I think in the first week, it was a sales job, and I was given that classic thing of sell me this pencil. Oh, yes. And so I started to say, this pencil's amazing. <laughs> it's got exactly that. <laughs> and then just turning that on its head. So, yeah. why do you need a pencil? All that sort of thing. Uh, well, yeah, if you want yes. to write something, what are you going to do? Yes. And I think that's just informed how I've approached every part of my career from that new business role through the journalism that I've done for many years through to the PR and editorial work that I do at Red Setter now. Great. What about you, Claire? Have you got any, any advice that you've been given? I think 
Generally, it would be from looking when I first started working with a new business development. It's about listening. It's about getting excited. I mean, genuinely getting excited about working with the agencies that we work with. Mm. Finding out what's really good about them and just listening to what they want to convey. And yeah. Yeah, sales is all about listening and not yes. talking. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, often forgotten. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <Often forgotten. laughs> and is there a book or film or TED Talk or an inspiring person that you'd like to share with us today? Page One. It's a book that was recommended to me by... Oh, a film, sorry, that was recommended to me by one of our clients, actually. And it's about the New York Times. Okay. And about, it's a defence of the great journalism that that organisation does. And there's a scene where the antagonist of it all has the uh, homepage of Gawker, I think it is, a news aggregation service, and saying, look at all these stories that are on there. Isn't this great news? And then holds up another sheet. So this is where I've cut out all the stories that were broken first by the New York Times, where it was our team of researchers, journalists, going out, doing the investigation. And there's a real role for that. In the same way that I think when it comes to business thought leadership, there's a real role for content that actually does lead rather than follow where people have taken time to research their audience, understand the issues they're facing and the views that they have, and to say something that's genuine rather than just a bit manufactured and a bit me too. Great. We'll look that up. I haven't come across that film. Brilliant film. So we're going to be giving away a book to a lucky listener what would you recommend for us? I'd recommend The Elements of Style by Strunk and White. It's a book that I always recommend in writing workshops that I do over the years. And it was written over 100 years ago now by two Harvard professors, one of whom wrote Charlotte's Web. And it's a really short book, and it's incredibly direct, punchy, and as you might expect, well-written. And it's all about how to write well. And it was quite game-changing in the way that I approach my writing, so I'd, I'd really recommend it to everyone who wants to write well. Oh, great, great. And will it help with even social media, uh, Twitter, writing for Twitter? Well, I think, yeah, so much of that is about having the content that sits behind the, yes. the tweet. Yes. And so, yeah, very much I would recommend that having the right ideas, having ideas that matter to your audience is important, but be able to craft those in the right way, in the same way that nobody would come to me to design something. Yep. <laughs> I, I think having writing skills is important if you're going to write. Lovely. Brilliant. Well, we'll be giving away a copy of The Elements of Style if you join in the conversation on Twitter with hashtag SmallSparkTheory at GunpowderTweets. OK, Claire, and what about you? Um, it wouldn't be necessarily a book or a film or a, a business um, person as such, but it's mainly just my favourite designers, so people like Mary Lewis with brands and packaging design has just changed everything on that front, and Terence Conran for the commercialisation of design, some people like Peter Saville for his work within music and some of my favourite artists like your Blue Monday cover and that kind of thing. And people at the moment like Sargmeister and Walsh in New York who mm. I just think are absolutely fantastic and pushing graphic design into places has never been before. I think they do an amazing job. And it's basically getting those people and agencies known and out there. I kind of have a, a sort of secret underlying mission as well, apart from just kind of getting... Oh, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> tell it's us your secret mission. <laughs> if you ask anybody generally in the public what advertising is, everybody can tell you, you know, your gran can tell you what advertising is. But if you ask people, when people say to me, what do I do for a living? And I tell them about design... They don't understand what it is, so children don't understand what it is. People who don't work in design tell you, well, what do you mean by design? What's been designed? I kind of like looking around, you know, the chair you're sat on has been designed, the table's been designed, the cup's been designed, what your reading's been designed, the menu you're about to read. Everything has got a visual communication behind it. And getting that across and raising the profile of design generally, I think is really important so children know what it is and yeah. people around just sort of buy into the importance of design. It's not a superfluous thing that makes things look nice if you've got the time. It's yes. the way to communicate with people. Yeah, that's a good mission. Yeah, that's a And it's thing. a huge part of our economy as well. So, Absolutely, uh, it's massive. Yeah, it's it's an important, important <laughs> mission, Claire. Um, <laughs> If you can hear a strange noise here uh, while you're listening to this today, we're in the pod. It's a beautiful sunny day over here at White City, but it's windy and there are 
odd rattling sounds as the wind whistles past the pod. Thank you so much, both of you, for coming along today and telling us about social media. We will be providing a link to your report, which is on your website. So there'll be a link on the accompanying blog and on LinkedIn with all the details of how you can contact Red Setter. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Susie. You have been listening to Small Spark Theory, brought to you by Gunpowder Consulting. Join in the conversation on Twitter at Gunpowder Tweets, hashtag Small Spark Theory. The podcast is created and hosted by me, Lucy Mann. Our editor is Claire Urban, and our producer is Isabel Jarvis. Music is provided by Duke Deck, available at dukedeck.com. This episode was recorded at the pod at White City Place. For more information and to download further episodes, head to our blog at gunpowderconsulting.com and if you like what you hear, head to iTunes and leave us a star. <laughs>